Good evening. evening. And may the Lord be with you. you. Welcome to God's house. It's my pleasure to be here this evening to lead you in worship. And I pray once again that our time will be filled up with the Holy Spirit into our hearts and he'll lead us into a stronger faith with him and help us in our walk with him as well. Tonight I want to speak a little bit about seeds, about good seeds and bad seeds. And uh, if we've ever planted a garden or been on a farm, we know that we plant good seeds, but guess what happens? There's a lot of bad seeds out there, and they do a lot of competition with the good plants. So we're going to talk a little bit more about that. So let us um, join in together as we sing our opening hymn. Please stand. We begin this service in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Because we cannot fully understand God, we are prone to question his judgments and wonder why he allows evil people to oppose Christ's church from without and from within. But none of us is without error. Let us reflect on our own sinful human condition as we come into the presence of the Almighty God and confess our sin. Through Isaiah, the Lord declared, I am the first and I am the last. Besides me, there is no God. We confess that we have allowed ourselves, our friends, and the things around us to determine our actions. We have not loved you with all our heart, mind, and strength. Forgive us, Lord. Paul wrote that we do not know what to pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us. 
we confess that in our pride we have thought we knew what was good for us, and when we did not receive it, we doubted that you have even heard our prayer. Forgive us, Lord. In his parable about the wheat and weeds, Jesus explained that in the day of judgment, all causes of sin and all lawbreakers will be sent to a place of weeping and gnashing of teeth. We confess that we have judged the people around us, hurting many in the process and failing to see our own faults and failures. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves, nor have we trusted your plans. Forgive us, Lord. God's calming word through Isaiah was, Fear not, nor be afraid. Even while we stumble, the promise is that the Spirit helps us in our weakness. In the end, we who have been made righteous by Christ's sacrifice for us shall be gathered as wheat into God's eternal harvest. As an ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. He who has ears, let him hear. We hear and rejoice. To God be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. The Old Testament reading is from Isaiah chapter 44. There is only one true God and we are his witnesses. This is what the Lord says, Israel's King and Redeemer, the Lord Almighty. I am the first and I am the last. Apart from me, there is no God. Who then is like me? Let him proclaim it. Let him declare and lay out before me what has happened since I established my ancient people and what is yet to come. Yes, let him foretell what will come. Do not tremble, do not be afraid. Did I not proclaim this and foretell it long ago? You are my witnesses. Is there any God besides me? No, there is no other rock. I know not one. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle reading is from Romans chapter 8. Every believer longs for the glory that will be given in heaven. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. The creation waits in eager expectation for the sons of God to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the glorious freedom of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. Not only so, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved. But hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what he already has? But if we hope for what we do not have, we wait for it patiently. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groans that words cannot express. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints in accordance with God's will. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 13th chapter. We are encouraged to patiently await the hour of God's judgment. Jesus told them another parable. 
The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. When the wheat sprouted and formed heads, then the weeds also appeared. The owner's servants came to him and said, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Where then did the weeds come from? An enemy did this, he replied. The servants asked him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? No, he answered, because while you are pulling the weeds, you may root up the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. At that time, I will tell the harvesters, first collect the weeds and tie them in bundles to be burned. Then gather the wheat and bring it into my barn. Then he left the crowd and went into the house. His disciples came to him and said, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He answered, The one who sowed the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, and the good seed stands for the sons of the kingdom. The weeds are the sons of the evil one, and the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are angels. As the weeds are pulled up and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will weed out of his kingdom everything that causes sin and all who do evil. They will throw them into the fiery furnace, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears, let him hear. This is the gospel of the Lord. Let us now together confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated as we sing the hymn.
Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, be with us now. Send your Holy Spirit among us. Strengthen us by your word. Lead us in everything that we do. And help us to love one another. And help us to be patient in waiting for your judgment. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you've ever lived or worked on a farm, or if you've ever had a garden, you would have probably, at some point in time, used a hoe. Do you know why you need a tool like that? Well, let me tell you. It's in the Bible. And God said to Adam, because you listened to your wife and ate from the tree about which I commanded you, you must not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you, though through painful toil you will eat of it all the days of your life. It will produce thorns and thistles for you, and you will eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your brow you will eat your food until you return to the ground, since it is from where you were taken. For dust you are, and to dust you will return. Sound familiar? Oh yes, it was Adam and Eve. The sin of Adam and Eve brought the curse to the earth, and part of that curse was weeds. Now years ago, before technology and chemicals became common, Anyone raised on a farm probably had to use a hoe many times. They used it for the purpose of chopping out the weeds. And when I was much younger, I lived on a farm, I used a hoe so much that many times my hands were so sore and bleeding from using a hoe. Back then, we had corn and beans in the field, and we didn't have the chemicals to kill the weeds, so we had to go out after they grew up and chop them out, particularly cockleburs from the beans. It was a hot, miserable job. Well, anyone who has used a hoe realizes that you can easily destroy the good plants by, make, by mistaking a good plant for a weed, because many weeds tend to look like the good plants until they mature. Or another problem is chopping too close to the plant, which can destroy both the good plants and the bad. I've done that too especially when my mother would ask me to go out into our garden. And we had a very large garden, and we planted watermelon and cantaloupe and things like that. And they had long vines and, and grew everything together. It was very difficult to go in there and chop out the weeds. So I'd go in there and use that hoe and chop them out. And one time I hit the vine. Well, I didn't say anything about it. I just went back in the house, and the next day... There was a big brown stripe through the garden. Yeah, I had done it. So it's difficult. Our gospel reading for today addresses the problem as it applies to his people rather than crops. It is a story about two sowers of seeds, one good and one bad. And Jesus told this parable to the crowds that were always following him and then also to his disciples who were with him. But later the Jesus' disciples came to him and they asked him to explain the meaning of the parable because they did not understand it. So Jesus had to take them aside and explain it to them. Jesus is the sower of the good seed. The good seed is identified as all believers throughout the world. The sower of the bad seed is the devil. He's the one who plants the weeds. 
The weeds are all the unbelievers throughout the world that live among the believers. The weeds are so close and intertwined with the good plants that if you would pull out a weed, it may also take out a good plant with it. So Jesus instructs his, his apostles not to pull out the weeds, but to let them grow until the harvest. Not until the end of the age will the evil ones be separated from the righteous. The sons of evil will be collected and bound to experience everlasting suffering. The righteous ones will be gathered to a safe place where they will live forever in heaven with God. So what can we learn from this? Jesus clearly tells us that during our time on earth, we will live in a world that is filled with both believers and unbelievers. Believers being the good seed and the unbelievers being the weeds. Now we all know that we don't like weeds. And weeds causes us all kinds of problems. So when it comes to caring for the good plants, we get the hoe and we start chopping. But we also realize that we will sacrifice some good plants to get rid of the weeds. And what we learn from this parable is that chopping out the weeds before the harvest is not acceptable to God because we are speaking about people. About people, whether they are good or bad. God does not want to lose one believer on account of any unbelievers. So we have to live together until Christ returns with his holy angels, and then that separation will occur. For now, even though we must live together, the difference will be seen between us. The genuine believers will be known by the fruits of their faith. And the unbelievers will be identified by their weedy fruit. The weedy fruit can be easily recognized by their evil activities. However, there are those who pretend to be believers and they are much more difficult to recognize. They are very deceptive with their false teaching and false worship that tempts many people to look at their own merits and their own good works as justification before God. Even so, the Lord instructs his servants not to pull out the weeds, but to let them grow with the wheat until the harvest. Now, the problem is, it is difficult for us to just stand by and allow and even tolerate evil in the world, let alone in the midst of the church. But we have God's promise that in his time, he will judge all the unbelievers, all the evil people, all the false teachers and hypocrites and they will receive their due punishment at the end of the age. Then they will be cast out, along with the devil and all the causes of sin, into the eternal fire. So, this is great news for all believers. For we can look forward to a new life without any causes of sin. At our death and later on the last day, we are gathered in for safekeeping. The same angels who cast out the sons of the evil one away to their fiery fate, they also gather the beloved Christians to the eternal care of Jesus. Certainly, today and every day to the end of time, the church is going to struggle with the causes of sin in the world and the work of the evil one within our midst. This is why we believers who are still on earth are called the church militant. 
Jesus tells us he does not bring peace, but he brings the sword. Well, not that we would use a real sword as a weapon. But we have something that is much more powerful. We have the word of God. And his word is, in fact, a double-edged sword. By its almighty power, it is the one thing that separates the good from the bad. No hoe is required. Just the word of God. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, God's work will be accomplished. Nevertheless, even though we struggle against the evil of this world, we learn from God's word that already now in the church, true peace can be found. Where? In Jesus Christ. In the means of grace, Christ dwells with us and does his ministry through his called servants, and in his grace, we are already at peace. We are at peace with God. We are at peace with our guaranteed future. Jesus' death on the cross has sealed his pledge to redeem our bodies at that future date, which is still unknown. His voice in the reading of the scriptures and the preaching of the word assures us that he is with us despite our suffering in this unbelieving world. His very body and blood, which you eat and drink with the bread and wine, gives certainty that you are forgiven for all those times the wickedness around you has drawn you into sin. Even the suffering the church experiences in this life, well, it identifies with the sufferings of Christ. But in this way, the church is blessed, just as the Lord tells us. He says this, Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way, they persecuted the prophets who were before you. These two verses, in part, describe the theology of the cross. These verses help us to understand what it means to be human. They help us to understand what it means to live in a world that is broken by sin. But let us rejoice, because soon enough, our suffering will end. If we continue to place our trust in God, something great is going to be given to us. As our Lord says at the end of our gospel reading for today, then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Amen. Amen. Let us now honor our Lord with our offering.
we add these special intercessions. We continue to pray for Ellen Wood, who is uh, recovering in a rehab facility uh, from his surgery and is still struggling. We pray for Kevin Dix, Terry Dix's husband, who is struggling with um, heart issues, infection issues, and cancer all together and is very ill. We also pray for Mary Garcia, Martin Garcia's mother, who was just admitted to the hospital yesterday, and they are running tests on her to see what her issues might be. We also pray for uh, Janice Krull's sister, uh, her Janice Krull's sister-in-law, uh, Dorothy Nelson, had passed away, and we pray for her family. And we also, in, you know, keep in our prayers for Reverend Ildani, who is serving in Kenya, a very difficult area. Uh, they're dealing with drought. They deal with uh, severe crime, and uh, they've been recently attacked. And, uh, and so we just need to keep these, uh, especially Reverend Ildani, in our prayers for the work that he is trying to do there. Let us all stand for prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you with heavy hearts because we know that there is so much evil in the world and we know who's responsible. We know that it is Satan going around causing all kinds of difficulty for, for everybody. So we pray for peace throughout the world that you would guide and direct people to come to you for guidance. Lord, in your mercy, Oh, Lord, we also pray for the leaders in our country and for the leaders throughout the world that you would guide and direct them to do the right thing according to your will and not according to their own so that we might see peace reign once again in the world. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. Oh, Lord, we also pray for our church here, for Peace Lutheran Church. We pray for all the ministries that we do here that you would continue to bless us and guide us in that you, all the things that you would have us do so that we might be able to reach out into the community and touch the hearts of unbelievers. Lord, in your mercy. We also pray for Reverend Garrett Smith as he still considers his call to hear, to peace. We ask that you would guide him and direct him so that he might know where you would have him serve. Lord, in your mercy. Yes, oh Lord, we also ask that you would provide us with gentle rain to rain upon the ground that waters our crops. We have been blessed in the past, but it dries, it's dry, and we need that wonderful rain that you send once again. Help us, O oh Lord. Lord, in your mercy. We also pray for our sick and our suffering. We pray for Alan, for Kevin, for the family of Dorothy Nelson, for Mary, for Reverend Ildani, and for all those that we haven't mentioned that you know of, Lord, within our congregation, be with them. Help them through their troubles and their difficulties. Grant them your peace by the power of your Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. Oh, Lord, we lift up to you all our prayers. We trust in you. We trust that you hear them. And we know that you will answer them according to your will. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory 
forever and ever. Amen. Receive now the blessing of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Please be seated for just a moment. Thank you everybody for being here this evening. And I pray that once again our time together is uplifting for us and uh, strengthens us for the rest of the week. Do we have any announcements at all? Okay. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. <laughs>